Welcome to all of you online. Welcome to all of you in person. And we thank you that um, you are here with us in a place of safety, victory, and what? True, true prosperity. And true prosperity is having true priorities, which means that we know your love relationship with God is number one. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's pray. And we're going to get started. As we pray all week long, we believe and declare that everybody who should be here is here. That's right. Everybody who should be here is here. Right. And that you're going to receive what God wants you to receive. Amen. So we just give God praise right now for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on down. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We bless you and praise you in the name of Jesus. We magnify and we glorify your holy name. We thank you, Father, that this is the hour of teaching and preaching. And as I decrease, your Holy Spirit will increase and speak and move in with and through me, taking um, advantage of all the trinity of my person for the glory of God and for the benefit of this, your people. And let every soul say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I came to receive. I came to and I will receive revelation knowledge of the greatness, goodness, and faithfulness of God, and of who I am, what I receive, and what I can do in Christ the Lord. Amen. And thank God. Give God another hand. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. Well, church, uh, you know I have been on a series. Uh, over the last couple of months about growing in our relationship with God. And for the last couple of weeks, uh, actually I've not been uh, in, in the pulpit in a traditional message uh, position. So uh, it's been a little while. And I wanted to get back to some of the things we were talking about in the series, but uh, some things have uh, occurred recently. Uh, we had basically a death in the family. Uh, someone who was very close to us was basically family. And uh, they had a sudden death. And the Lord just spoke to my heart and told me to preach this. So I want to minister this today. Uh, and I think it's going to be a blessing to all of us. If you don't have, if you'd like to follow with me, there's a worksheet. There's a physical worksheet. Uh, that you can follow with me. If you don't have one, raise your hand. One of the ushers will give you one. Uh, and also, you members, you know, you got it on your phone or through email also. All right, in the book of Psalms, Psalm number 62, and starting at verse number 5, it reads as follows. Psalm 62, verse 5, Holy Bible, Holy People, Holy Service. It says, my soul wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. <coughs> he is my defense. I shall not be moved. Somebody say, I shall not be moved. And you know that doesn't mean physically. That means spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Say amen. amen. And he says in verse 7, in God is my salvation and my glory, my the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Meaning pause and think about it. Consider it. Church, I'd like to teach uh, today, this morning, from the life-changing, life-building, life-blessing message, simply entitled, Trust in God Always. Can you say that with me? Trust, Trust in God, God always. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's look at my uh, foundational text, the, the key foundational verse, I should say. The key verse there is verse 8. Verse 8. And it says, verse 8, it says, trust in him 
at all times. You people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Somebody say, trust in him. Trust now, now uh, the emphasis is in him. There should be a slide up there with just that verse. The emphasis is in him. Verse 8. Trust in him. And then it says, at all times. This is very, very important instructions. See, you, you know, uh, that word trust has to do with confidence. In other words, what, what, what are you going to have confidence in? Or another way of saying it, what are you going to rely on? Amen? But it's telling you to trust in him. Somebody say, in God. And then, and then it says, at all times. At all times. Now, you know, it, 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 it's interesting because you may think you're trusting in him at all times until you experience different and diverse times. In other words, when things are going well, it's easy to trust in him. Say amen. amen. But when you, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like traveling uh, uh, in, a, in a ship. And as long as the weather is fine and the seas are not raging, it's easy to trust in that ship, you know, to trust that everything's all right. And as soon as the storm hits, you're like, oh, Lord, wait a minute now, hold up now. <laughs> and then the question is, are you trusting in the captain? Come on now. You know, the captain may jump off the ship before you. <laughs> it's been known to happen. Somebody, come on, somebody, hey, say, man, are you, trusting in, are you trusting in how they built that ship? Yeah, one preacher said, you know, be careful. He said, uh, professionals built the Titanic, but amateurs built the ark. Come on now. And the ark didn't sink. Okay, come on, somebody. So, so what are you trusting in? Are you trusting in the captain? Are you trusting in the, the, the building materials? Are you trusting in who made it? Or when the rough seas happen, are you trusting in God? Come on, come on. Somebody say, trust in God. I have a couple of uh, key statements here. First key statement is, because today we want to do, uh, today we want to do, let's, next slide, there you go, that was the slide I wanted, and now we're going to move to the, the, the faith statements. Today we're going to do, we're going to compare uh, faith and trust. We're going to compare faith and trust. Now, uh, on the surface, faith and trust, they sound like the same thing. And they sound like the same thing because they're, they're interconnected, they overlap. Uh, we here at Truth and Love, we define faith as believing in and acting upon what God said. All right. Okay? That's how we define faith. Because James said, faith without works is dead. So obviously, if, if it's true faith, there's got to be some, some action. That's right. Amen? That's right. That's right. But the action is based upon belief. Yeah. Right? The Bible says, he that comes to God, Hebrews chapter 11, must first believe that he yes. is. I was with somebody, speaking of evangelism, I was with somebody uh, this weekend trying to talk to them about the Lord. And uh, the guy was telling me, he said, well, you know, I, I believe that there is a higher power. And I said, okay. I said, well, you just one step away now. You know, because he wasn't an atheist. He did understand that there is a higher power, all right? right, right but the Bible right. says, he that comes to God must first believe that he is. He is. Somebody say, God is. God is. Always, was, always was. Always will be. Always will be. That's, who he is. That's who he is. Come on, give God some praise. That's who he is. So, so, so you gotta, so, so in other words, faith is when you act on what God says to you and you believe that God can speak to you because he does exist and he does talk to his uh, creation called man. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Especially when you're born again. He can really speak to you. But you know, God can speak to you even if you're not born again. All right. Say amen. 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 This is Pastor, give me a biblical reference for that. The Old Testament. Right. <laughs> the whole Old Testament. Yeah. Hey, remember when, when uh, uh, Abraham lied and told the, 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 the king that his wife was his sister and the king was getting ready to sleep with his with his wife and the Lord spoke to the man in the dream and said don't you touch her he said that's that man's wife he said what shut your mouth he said what 
He said, he said, yeah, man. He said, I was, he said, I protected you because I didn't want you to mess up and then I would have to curse you by you sleeping with that man's wife because he's a prophet. And he said, well, he shows you the prophet that I told me that was his wife. But the point I'm trying to make to you is God can speak to anybody if he wants to. Amen? All right. So, so faith is, is when God says something to you and like that, like uh, Abimelech in that example, he did not sleep right. with Abraham's wife. Right. So, so watch this. Faith toward God. No, no, no. Stay, stay with me. Faith toward God is confidence and action based on a particular thing God said. Now, I need you to get this. this is, to, 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 to stay with me now. This is very important. Somebody say faith, faith. Versus, trust. versus trust. In other words, here's a way to kind of think about it. Think about it like this. Faith is, now I'm not talking about being in the faith. Okay. In the faith, that's the common, common precious, like faith of all believers. Right. Okay? Right. That's the faith. Right. I'm talking about uh, faith uh, in, in another sense. Uh, faith in general is more specific right. to a particular thing right. that God has told you to do. Yeah. Whereas trust is more general. If you understand what I'm saying, uh, faith is more micro and trust is more macro. Okay. Faith, faith is more uh, 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 faith is more more single shot and trust is more uh, shotgun. Right. If you understand, faith, faith, tr tr trust deals with the whole thing and faith may deal with something specific. Are y'all with me today? Okay. So faith. Somebody say toward God. Is confidence and action based on a particular thing God said. Now, how about trust? Trust in God. Now, say in God. In God. Now, I like this. Trust in God is confidence uh, not based on any particular thing God said, but in everything he said and who he is. There it is. Trust is when you believe everything that God said and it's based on who he is. Somebody say he is. Uh, you know, it's an interesting. Now, that's trust. That's trust. Do you realize that that uh, uh, if you, listen, see, God doesn't deal with it. Uh, he, he, God is an all or nothing God. Either you believe everything that's in the Bible or you don't believe anything that's in the Bible. Well, I believe this, but I, I mean, where do people get this? I believe, I, watch this. Somebody said to me once, I believe that, I believe in Jesus. I just don't believe in that virgin birth thing. What? So then you don't believe in Jesus. No, no. Yeah. See? No. See, but when you believe in God yeah. and that he is who he says he is, yeah. then what, 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 uh, what would stop him or limit him from making a man without a man's seed? Right. God did, he made the first man without a man's seed. Come on, church. He made the first Adam without a, without a sperm. Come on, can I, if I got to get biological on you, come on. He made the first man from the dust of the earth, blew his breath into the man, and man became a living soul, and he did not need man's help. But then he comes later and he brings the last Adam and he says, Mary, you're going to bear the son of God. And she said, well, wait a minute now. How can this be? I've not slept with a man. He said, it can be because I'm God. Now give God some praise. He said, that's how it can be. He said, I'm going to have the Holy Spirit to impregnate you. I speak in the word, the word, the spirit, the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. God's, God is, is intending it. The word is, is speaking out to it, and the Holy Spirit is overshadowing her and impregnating her. Amen. Amen. You can turn me down just a little bit, Sister Lottie. Okay, now, here we go. Faith toward God is confidence and action. But trust, trust in God, trust in God is what? Is not based on any particular thing he said, but everything that he is. Right. Amen. Right. Watch this. Faith, next slide, faith has to do with the present. Faith has to do with the present. But trust has to do with what? The future. The future. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Well, how do I know faith has to do with the present? What's the very first uh, verse of Hebrews chapter 11? Now. 
faith. Actually, the first word of Hebrews chapter 11. Not just the first verse, but the first word. Somebody say, now faith. Now faith. Yeah, see, faith is now. That means that when God tells you to do something, he means when? Now. now. When he tells you to take out the trash, he means when? Now. When he tells you to write this down, he means when? Now. When he tells you to call sister so-and-so or brother so he means when? Now. now. When he tells you to give up that money, he means when? Now. Oh, okay, see, now, I thought I didn't want to lose you on that one. Because, you know, when it gets to money, when folks be talking about, I was with you, God, all up until you said my money. When you said my money, I, I thought you meant now and later like the candy. Now, maybe later. I'm not, I'm not sure. Somebody say it's still now. When God tells you to give, he means now. Amen. He's been telling me stuff all, all week long. Every day he tells me something. Get, do this, give me that, do that, say this, whatever. See, uh, you saw something that happened today, right? When we recognized my wife as co-pastor, I did not, I did not even tell her. She just told She said, no, I didn't know. But God told me, he said, we're in our eighth year now, and this is what I want you to do. And he didn't have to say it, but what was implied was what? Now. Do it now. Give God some praise if you get it. Trust has to do with the what? Future. Now watch this. Trust, watch this. Trust is synonymous with hope. Trust is synonymous with hope. That's a very important point I just made. In other words, where you see trust, it said, trust in God. Guess what? Since trust and hope are basically interchangeable or synonymous, whenever you see trust in God, what it's really also saying is hope in God. On, see, now. now this shows you the difference between, see, remember, faith and hope, they're two sides of the same coin. Okay. They're not the same thing, but, but, but they're on the same coin. Okay. In other words, uh, I can do what God says to do now because my all my hope. Did she just sing that song today? Yeah. Oh, that same thing. Help hope to this. this. Yeah. But all my all my help comes from the Lord because all my hope is in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. It, like I said about that ship, yeah. that's great. I'm glad they've used some good uh, equipment and all that stuff and everything else, but but they might not have. It reminds me of that story about the, the man who's a builder and uh, he has a boss and he builds houses for this boss and the boss told him that uh, he wanted him to build a house. And the man built the house, but he didn't, uh, the boss didn't know that the man's heart wasn't totally right. So everywhere he was building, he was skimping. He was getting the, the cheapest uh, type of, 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 of piping for the plumbing the cheapest type of materials for the roof, right. the cheapest type of tiles for the, you know, he was doing all that stuff, and, and, and he was he was saying, man, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut corners and all this stuff, and I'm gonna pocket the difference. All right. All and right. I'm gonna save the money on the difference. Yeah. And then he said, boss, here it is. Here's your house. I got it all fixed. And man, that house looked beautiful on the outside. Yeah. And, and, and he said, here's your house. And the man said, you know, you've been such a faithful servant to me. He said, to be honest with you, he said, you know, I have several houses. I don't need another house. He said, I decided to just give this one to you. It's your house. What's my point? You can't trust in man. You, you might think the thing might look good, but you better have your, you out there on the seven seas, you better have your trust in the Lord. All your help, all your hope, it comes in the Lord. Give God some praise. Amen. Uh, somebody bring the air down a little bit. One of the ushers, please, if you'll adjust it, bring the temperature up so the air will go down, please. All right, now, our greatest trust and hope is not in what we can achieve or receive in this world, our life. Our greatest trust and hope is not a what, but a who. That is a powerful statement. Let me see the one right before that. Our greatest trust, oh, I just had that one in. Okay, let me go back to the one we had. Our greatest trust, two statements. Our greatest trust and hope is not in what we can achieve or receive in this world or life. I should have, I should have put that up on the slide. I'm going to say it again. Did you hear what I just said? In other words, in other words, listen to me very carefully. Everybody who is not lazy is trying to achieve something before they get out of here. Can I get an amen on that? 
Can, can I get another amen on that? Amen. I mean, think about it. If you're not lazy, I mean, if you're lazy or hopeless, then I guess you don't want to do anything. Right. But if you're like me and a whole lot of other people, you're trying to accomplish something yeah. before you get out of here. Say amen. amen. Well, guess what? I need you to understand that, again, in this theological discussion that we're having, your greatest trust and your greatest hope, yeah, we can stand in faith based, based on what God says. God, you know, says that, you know, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You can stand in faith and the Lord will say to you, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. All of that is all well and good. You can even stand in faith knowing that the Lord said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans that are good and not evil. Plans to give you a hope and expect in him. But, but, but you can take that scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11, and you can say, my hope is in this dream that God put on my heart. But I'm here to tell you something. Your greatest hope is that whenever you leave this flesh, you're going to be with the Lord. Now that trumps all the other stuff that you will try to achieve in your life. It really does. It really does. Because I don't care what you can accomplish or achieve, at some point you got to leave here. And you can't take it with you. You cannot take it with you. If, if, if you it, only what you do for Christ will last, meaning that the things that you did to glorify God, they will, uh, as the scripture says, and your works do follow you. Yes. Uh, Revelation 14, 13. Yes. It says, blessed are those who die in the Lord. Yes. So that lets you know there's only two ways to die. You die in the Lord or you die not in the Lord. If you die in the Lord, it says your works do follow you. In other words, you don't live a vain life. You don't live a life. But the greatest hope you have, really, because you don't know when you're going to die. The greatest hope you have is, listen, it don't matter if it's sudden death, long death, painful death, suffering death, no suffering, when I was asleep, when I was in the hospital. It is when, I, when my spirit leaves this body, I'm going to be with Jesus. Now, that's the ultimate hope. Come on, somebody. That's the ultimate hope. Let me see if I can try to make this thing uh, 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 so I can kind of put some meat on this bone to help you get what I'm talking about. It's the main promise that when our spirit leaves our bodies, we will spend eternity with God. All right, there we go. Now, I got uh, a couple of examples that I want to use to try to, uh, to, try to uh, bring some, some real light and illumination to this. First of all, let's look at the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, uh, Israel... Watch this now. Listen to me. This, this is a great example. In the Old Testament, uh, Israel was promised uh, that they would not stay in captivity forever. Right. Amen? amen. Can, can I get an amen about that? Amen. They were in captivity for 435 years. Yes. Am I right about that? Yes. In Egypt. Yes. Amen? Yes. God told a man named Moses to go down there and tell Pharaoh to let, let my people go. go. And uh, he went and he told him that. And it, and it didn't happen. It didn't happen right away. See, his faith, obedient to what God said, said, you go down there, you take Aaron, your brother, down there, you take that stick, and you do, and you say what I said, and they don't let him go. But see, what, but what God, watch this now. But what God did not tell him was that God himself was hardening Pharaoh's heart. Did you hear me? Yeah, I heard he said, he said, but but I'm hardening his heart. In other words, I don't really I want the people to go, but I don't want them to let I don't want him to let them go too easily. Because right. I want them to know that when they finally are delivered, yes. it, 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 it was because of God and not because Pharaoh was just so kind or weak or whatever. He just, I mean, ten plagues. Right. And then finally God said, Now the people want them. But here, stay with me. Here's what I want to see. So uh, Moses got the people out of slavery. Uh -huh. Of course, we know that they didn't have faith to get into the promised land, and they uh, wandered around the wilderness for 40 years. They finally got to the promised land. Now watch this. They're in the promised land, and now everything that seems like they had faith for has come true. Yeah. They're in the promised land. Yeah. You, you didn't finally got that job. They're in the promised land. You finally got that man. Come on, somebody. Talk to me now. You've you, 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 you been praying and believing, and God brought you in the promised land. But guess what happened while they finally got out of debt? All that debt you got out of. Oh, look what God did. Guess what happened when they were in the promised land? They went back to prison. Isn't that something? 
They didn't do everything that God wanted them to do. And he let some folk called the Babylonians come and put them back. The Egyptians had them in prison. They got out of prison. In other words, you can believe God to get all that weight off and then all of a sudden something happened. Who knows? Somebody died. You get all depressed and you put all the weight back on. It, it, is it that God, you, you don't have any more faith in him and he's not good anymore? Well, even if things don't always go the way that you think they should go, you still need to trust God, yeah. not because of a specific thing, but because of who yeah. he is yeah. and where you're on your way to. Right. In other words, even if everything doesn't work out the way you think it should in this life, you got to remember that this life is nothing compared to eternal life. Oh. And in eternity, God has promised you yeah. all will be well. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's all going to be well. So then watch this. Now they're in captivity. They're in captivity. The people of God, the chosen people are in captivity. And they're in captivity, and they have a specific word from God, and that is this. You might be in captivity, but don't let captivity be in you. Come on now. You might be in the world, but don't let the world be That's in you. It. That's in it. other words, things may not have worked out like you thought. You got laid off, but that doesn't, that doesn't, mean, that, that doesn't mean that you should stop praying. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you should stop believing. Or let me, let me put it down. That doesn't mean that you should stop trusting. Wow. Oh, you got a bad report from the doctor. You were believing uh, uh, for health and divine healing. Well, guess what? You been, Wait a minute. You serve on the deacon board. You, you sing in the choir. And yet the doctor's telling you it might be a, a, a cancer or something like that. And a, or you won't stop believing. You might have a problem with your faith right now. But, honey, do not lose your trust. Don't lose your trust on who God is. Yeah. Come what may, you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen? So there were these three Hebrew boys. They, they were in captivity with the rest of Israel. And they they kept on doing what they did before. They kept on eating right. They kept on praying right. But then one day, the enemy got so busy, what did he say? He said, we know what to do with them. We're going to change the rules of the game. You know, they, they call that in sports, uh, moving the goalposts. <laughs> you know, it's like once you start winning, they're going to change the rule, right? So, so they said that we're going to change the rules again. We're going to say uh, from now on, uh, when, when the music plays to, to glorify the king, anybody that doesn't bother that music is, you know, is they going into the fiery furnace. And so they were going to kill these three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Let's read and pick it up. Daniel chapter 3, verse 17. It says, if that is the case, this is how they responded. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. See, that's faith. We believe that our God, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, come on somebody, I'm healed. See, that's faith. But watch this. And he will deliver us from your hand. Boy, they even prophesying and, 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 and proclaiming. They had faith. They had proclamation. But wait a minute, church. Verse 18 says, but. Somebody say, but. Now, that's not unbelief. They're just saying, but well, we don't know the ultimate will of God. Maybe he, maybe he wants us to be a martyr. You know, there were some, all the apostles were martyred. Stephen was martyred. So don't think that just because you have faith, it doesn't mean, you have faith don't mean that you ain't going to die. You having faith and you being a good Christian doesn't mean that, that, that God's will couldn't be, that you might go on to be with the Lord. We don't know. So they said, but, say but. He said, but if not, in other words, they said, we have the faith to believe that God's going to deliver us from this. But if not, uh -huh. it wasn't, it wasn't lack of faith. It was a statement of trust. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image you have set up. In other words, uh, we're believing by faith that God's going to come in and deliver us. But if not, we trust him enough to know that if we die, we're going to be with him. We ain't, we, we, but what, what, what thing we ain't going to do, we are not going to be guilty of idolatry and go meet the Lord and have him say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evil servant. You didn't, you didn't trust me, and you need to go with the devil. Somebody say, I shall not be moved. Uh -huh. Listen, I need to, to take this a little fast forward to the New Testament. You know, in the New Testament, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 is what's called the Hall of Faith. It's the Hall of the Heroes of Faith, the Hall of Faith. And uh, in the Hall of Faith, you'll see the roll call, little fans, the fans. In the Hall of Faith, you'll see the roll call of all these people who, who watch this, 
who obeyed God. And before every one of their names, guess what it says? By faith. Somebody say, by faith. By faith. Abraham. Abraham. By faith. By faith. Isaac. 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 By faith. By faith. Moses. Moses. By faith. By faith. Sarah. 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 By faith. By faith. David. David. Are you getting the point? Yeah. Th this is talking about the fact that when God gave them a specific instruction, yeah. they did what God told them to do. Yeah. But I got news for you. In that chapter, there's a little verse there mm -hmm. that gives us some insight about the difference between faith and trust. Okay. Let's read it. Somebody say, let's read it. Let's read it. And here it is. It's Hebrew 11 and 13. Look at this. It says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. Wait a minute. Afar off is the what? Future. What did we say dictates the future? Your trust. Faith is now, but trust is future. See, they all died in faith doing what God told them to do. Say amen. It says, but, but, but. It says, but not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them. What were they assured of? They were assured that one day they would be with God. Do you realize that when Abraham obeyed and by faith begat Isaac and by faith was ready to sacrifice Isaac, by faith did what God told him to do. Watch this. Abraham died, and guess where Abraham went? He did not go to heaven. He went to the to the good part of hell. And they ended up calling it Abraham's bosom. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that he died believing that one day he would be with God. But he didn't know how long it was going to take before Jesus could come down to earth and make a way to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All the, is that, did it say all the Old Testament saints? Does it say that? These what? These all. Somebody say all of them. All the Old Testament say, I don't care how good they were. I don't care if it was Job. I don't care if it was uh, 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 any of them. They all died doing what they're supposed to do in faith, but they died not having received the ultimate thing their trust was for, which was to go to heaven, to be with God in heaven. What am I trying to tell you? Stop sitting up here talking about, well, uh, uh, I thought daddy should have lived at least to 100. Well, why, well, why did this person die at this time? Why did this happen this time? The most important thing you need to be thinking about is did they know the Lord? Yeah. The, the, the faith in a particular thing, like for example, healing is great, but the greater thing is trust in the healer. Trust in the God who controls everything. Trust in his most important promise was that if you're in him, then when you die, you go. go. Now, in the Old Testament, before Jesus died and made the way, they had to go to Abraham's bosom. But I'm here to tell you that once Jesus died, he went down to Abraham's bosom and he emptied it out. Come on, church. He emptied that thing. Ain't no Old Testament saints in there anymore. He took all Abraham and the boys... He took everybody to heaven with him. So when you die right now, there is no more purgatory. There is no more way station. There is no more waiting place. Jesus is the way. He has made the way. And the biggest thing you got to trust in is that you have eternal life assurance. Can't nothing happen to you until it's time. And when it's your time, you go directly to be with the Lord. Amen, somebody. Directly. 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 Church, I want to finish with this. The apostles at Jerusalem. The apostles at Jerusalem. Let's take a look at this. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. He says this. He says, uh, therefore, watch this. We're talking about the difference between faith and trust. Faith being something, uh, faith has a specific object. Well, I, you know, how many of y'all believe in God for something right now? Don't lie. You're in church. Don't you believe in God for something? That's faith. That's faith. Now, it may happen. It may not happen. But your trust is in him. Yeah. It's yeah. in God. Yeah. In other words, let me say it this way. Your faith is in something you want. Okay. Your trust is in something God wants and God is going to guarantee. God has already said yeah. that whatever happens, 
If you're in Christ, you not only are your sins forgiven now, but your e life is eternal with him, already secured. Amen? Right. All right, let me give you one more example. Here it is. This is the apostles. And they were all Jews, right? The apostles were all Jewish. All right? Acts chapter 1, it says, Therefore, when... Verse 6, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, in other words, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, watch this, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? There were Jewish apostles, Jewish disciples, and they uh, had something that they wanted, and they wanted to use their faith for it. So then they just said, well, now that we're talking to the risen Savior, let's ask him. And they said, Jesus, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And it's like it's like us today. You know, Paul was like that. He said, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they would be saved. So many of us, uh, from an ethnic standpoint, our heart's desire and prayer to God is that our people, I'm talking about natural, ethnic people would be saved. If you black, you, you, you want black people to stop being murdered and, 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 and treated wrong. If you're Hispanic, you want Hispanic people to stop being murdered and treated wrong and talked about. And all this. You understand what I'm saying? He, and, and these are things that you're having faith for. I mean, there's meetings and prayer meetings and marches and all this stuff and everybody's like, you know, Black Lives Matter and, you know, black power and brown power and women power and all this other stuff. You believe, you have faith all this thing. And notice they said, we want they, they wanted Israel power. That's what they wanted. They said, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Watch what happens. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times of the season wow. which the Father has put in his own authority. Come on now. <laughs> he said, that's above your pay grade. <laughs> it ain't your business. <laughs> Next verse, verse 8. Watch this. Uh -huh. Somebody say, but... but. He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes Come upon you. Now. In other words, what he's saying is, don't, don't put what you want as your priority. What you're having faith for is your priority. You just put your trust in what my priority is. Yeah. And my priority is uh, two things. One, I want you to get in the kingdom. And two, I want you to help establish the kingdom in the earth. And he says, but you shall receive power or dunamis, power from on high when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. In other words, church, you just need to know, have trust in this. Yes. Have trust in this. This is where we miss it. We have faith every day oh to do stuff that we want to do. Yes. But if we really would trust God, we would see what he wants to have done through us on, on a daily now. basis. On, he said, yes. this is how I want you to pray. Yes. Your kingdom come, yes. your will be done. Yes. And I want to leave you with this. If every day, I've, I've learned this, I'm telling you, I'm getting ready for next Sunday. That's the title to the message. Your kingdom come. Because if you get to this insight on what it means every day to say your kingdom come and your will be done. That's the trust yes. that you can have because that's the explicit will of God. Yes. It is the explicit will of God for the kingdom of heaven. That word come there, yes. it literally means it's er comedy. Er comedy, it means to manifest. All right. uh, all He's right. saying on a daily basis, I want you to believe and declare that, that the will, the power, and the glory that is in heaven can manifest. Isn't it interesting that the word is manifest? Right. It's, gonna, it's going to appear through a man. Yes. You have to manifest it. Your faith manifests. You, you, you operate in faith to obey, but your trust is in the fact that this is what God wants. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. There's a Bible as opposed to for praying. We never want to take it for granted that everybody on the sound of my voice uh, knows the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just said what we can trust in. We can trust in the fact that God wants people saved. We can trust in the fact that when we get saved, we go to heaven. Whatever the age, whatever the ethnicity, doesn't even matter. You know, it's nice. You, it was nice when uh, they believed Jesus to um, actually they were believing for Jesus to heal Lazarus. He said, I got something better than that. Mm -hmm. I got a resurrection. Yeah, 
You want you want you have faith for a healing. Uh -huh. What you need is trust for a resurrection. Come on now. See, God wants us to trust the most important thing, yes. and that is not what is in this world, right. but is in the world to come. Yes. If you're here under the sound of my voice and you have not trusted your eternity to God, this is your opportunity. Would everybody please repeat after me? God, God. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe, I believe that you want me, you want me to, spend to spend eternity with you. And as such, you sent your son, you sent your, son your only son, your, only son, your, son, your sinless son, your sinless son to, die for our sins. to die for our sins. He did that. He did that. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead to prove that he's Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. And I promise to love and care for you forever. If you just prayed that prayer, then you have now entered into an eternal relationship with the great I Am. And that's the greatest trust you can ever have. Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Great now, if you did that online, I recommend that you get into a good Bible-based church somewhere. If you're in the Southern California area, come out here and visit us on the screen. There should be uh, some information on where you can visit us. Praise the Lord. And if not, all you have to do is Google Truth and Love Christian Church and then come see us. We would be happy to see you and uh, to share the love of God with you. God bless you. We'll see you next week on our broadcast. Amen. Amen. Praise